Greetings, dear ghouls and goobliettes. Tonight's episode will be reviewing on the episode of The Adventures of PNP. The episode was the show was created back in the nineties when I was a little kid. The episode was Halloween on that very night when all the spooks and monsters come out. Little Pete, or as in Pete's brother, wants to go out to Katrina to do the annual history of breaking the record of most houses visit on Halloween and try to enlist help with his big brother Pete. But sadly, Big Pete is torn between his loyalty for his brother or coming of age and abandonment of childhood ritual of trick or treating. He must rather face the ridiculous his peers or go trick or treating or join the notorious. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had the script. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it all starts in a very quiet morning when little Pete was carving his pumpkin with his best friend, who is the actress who played Harriet the Spy. They two were the best friends ever around. I could ever see them. I mean, come on, seriously. As the little girl did say, they're like Athena and Apollo, both twins, and they worked together as a team. And then all of them wondered out loud if they're ever going to win or ever do the con. Are going to do the big annual trick or treat breaking con breaking the world record? However, their friendly neighborhood policeman came up and said that to them it might be their last one due to the fact that they are the Pumpkin eaters. Ah, oh, yes. Every year at Halloween, they came out and annoy the whole place. Police cannot do anything about it, though. They try every single year, and they always took their candy. They always tortured them in every way possible. The pumpkin eaters were just a bunch of big, nasty idiots. And Big Pete, he was not into the Halloween. He wanted to abandon. He wanted to stop because he thought it was too babyish to be part of Halloween. I mean, come on. He was grown. He was a grown boy. But as for his little brother, he adores Halloween. In fact, he even worshipped this, as I say, worshipped Halloween as a god. But then, in any case, as they are walking down the street, they see a pumpkin. And then, Pete just, Big Pete doesn't really care much about Halloween. I mean, he thought it was a worthless holiday. And then he thought that maybe he could crush a pumpkin just to have some fun. Then he felt he was tempted by the evil power to throw the pumpkin and smash it. Ooh, I'm not going to let anyone smash my pumpkin. I worked my butt off off it. Then as he threw it, it felt like he broke a big rule. Then as they move, without realizing it, the pumpkin ears were watching him. And they thought, and the leader of the pumpkin eaters thought that maybe he might be ready to join them. But then we get a funny siren. He smells. Do I smell peaches? In one of his pumpkin masks. The masks they wear are entirely made of pumpkin. Not masks. Pumpkin. Did I get I love pumpkin. But I hate peaches. But then that night, thanks. But then, well, Big P thought, well, things could be getting worse. But it did. That night, the pumpkin ears came and destroyed his pumpkin. His brother's pumpkin that he worked so hard on. They tortured everything. Destroyed decorations and everything. And Big P thought, was it my fault that I destroyed a pumpkin? Was it me who influenced them to destroy my little brother's pumpkin? And then thanks to that, the little girl's father said, No can do, gumdrop. You stay inside. You are not allowed to go on Halloween. And she was really upset. And now little Pete couldn't go off trick-or-treating. So she tries to ask his brother, Come on, fulfill this with me. I mean, come on, we're brothers to the end. Besides, I can't do it without someone holding more candy. So Big Pete, even though they didn't want to do it, was torn between his loyalty for his brother and from Ed Behrman, as I said earlier. So, to help his brother get through this, before then, here's a little tale. One of their former friends, who went to extreme even when he was 13, the pumpkin eaters messed with him up, and after since then, he was never the same again. And we'll see him down the road from this little review. So they chose two. They chose to be astronauts. Plus, reason one is he can hide who he is. Two. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, this part of the episode is really funny. He, little Pete was really because he could use the toilet. Ew! <laughs> and again, what do you expect? So yes, these two went out trick or treating from house to house. Although the pumpkinies were starting to close and close it, destroying Halloween. As the police once showed them, it would be their last Halloween if there was no stop to these beasts, the pumpkin born. And as soon as he got to the house, he meets the boy that I mentioned earlier that was jumped by the pumpkin and was known to be a, well, loser. Believe me, that card always gave me the creeps, even as a little kid. But at this point on, he didn't want to be part of it anymore. He said, sorry bro. With this, with that, well, before that ever happened, he stopped Big P from leaving. Come on, we gotta finish this. If we wanna win this, win a break in this record for the most house visitors, we gotta do it together. But sooner or later, the pumpkin ears are starting closer on anything, and some of the people out there in the houses are starting to close up shops. But some of them still have the spirit of Halloween to give candy to those who need it. Yeah, they're still giving out candy in their own way, of course. But then things got trickier and trickier and trickier for Big Pete. Big Pete finally thought that he had enough candy. They were going to head home. But he wanted to do one more house with Little Pete. But then, out of nowhere, he just felt like he couldn't do it anymore. They were done. So Big Pete left Little Pete's side and walked home. But as he was walking home, he went into a haunt house. Before that, he was targeted by the pumpkin eaters, and they chased him all over to a haunted house. Then they tried, then they tried to get him to hurt him, but in the end, they all trapped him in the house. Come on, you want to join us? Join the fun and all of that. Before they found out, in any case, they tried to tempt him to join them. They said. We saw what you did to that pumpkin. You are one of us. Join us. Come on, join us. And stop being a loser like your little brother. But meanwhile, he actually turned his radio on and little Pete was able to hear this whole conversation. So he ran to save his brother. But then in the end, he did smack the pumpkin all right. But he smacked it on Pete on uh, the bully's head. <laughs> And then they went chasing him all over the house until he was helped by a little Pete. Little Pete threw a bag of candy over his head and the police got them all. And even though they weren't able to fulfill their Halloween decorate, their uh, collection of rock and roll, you know, old breaking record, at least he did something wonderful. He saved his big brother from the big jerks. And the next day, they were told to clean up the house and everything, and the house that the little girl, the little girl lives. And believe me, they were loving this when the bully was doing all the chores. <laughs> they were loving this. Really true loving this. Right. Oh, in the end, they may not want any record plakins, but at least they did one thing. They saved their Halloween from those stupid pumpkin eaters. All I can say is this. This was a very good cartoon, and I asked, this was a very good live action show, and I ask you, who oh, am not going to watch it? Well, I'm going to watch it later on. Because I love it. So spooky. So spooky. <laughs> In any case, this is going to be a double feature. Um, let's see. Ah, yes. Next on our list. Well, it's only a two. It'll be the switching hour. Oh, yeah. From... Ah, you monsters! But before then, let me just stop to take the restroom. See? For this little review, as it all starts, a small boy named Nicky is taking out the garbage. He spots Ickes, who shows him. But Nickus, but Nicky, alerts his older brother of this monster, who thinks Nicky is crazy, and he saw Ickes as a bunny rabbit. But Nicky's now angered, but continues with his chores. As it is who runs through the dump to get back home, he didn't want to be, well, he didn't want to disturb the grumble. But then to all monsters, to all the monster students in class, the grumble went on to all his monster students that it's Halloween and the monsters are banned from walking up down due to the fact that they were miserable, stupid idiots. 
As for it, as for it, said, the grandpa always wants them to do better and better and better. Well, unfortunately, due to the fact that he said, You worthless piece of garbage! You can't scare a single human all this year! So that's like, you get bad! Something like that. Do you realize he's a lot like the, um, Big Blue from, uh, the Yellow Submarine animated movie from the 80s? Yeah, he is kind of like it. I mean, he has to be designed like that. But as for Icus, Clem, and Oblina, the three trio that I adore, Oblina and Clem try to get Icus into the spirit of Halloween to go out there. But if they do, they get snorched. And the Grumble has three doors. The first door, <laughs> scary. The second one, <laughs> but as for the pretty little cute house, the three, well, in their world, cute is ugly, and ugly is cute to them. You know, like the Adam's family, only the monsters. And trust me, bad, really bad, and you really don't want to know. It could come to me or disappointed as they were planning to escape to the Hollywood the human world. After school and they all on their rooms. And Icky doesn't want to disobey the gumbo, so Oblina and Crumb convince him. And so did other two monsters. As we were seeing them plan their escape. However, I don't think it's gonna happen. Meanwhile, in the human world, Nickus, I mean Nikki. The human, woman Icky scared that night before, dressed up as Icky for Halloween. Which makes Nikki older brother Jack and his friends laugh at him, thinking Nikki is a purple bunny. But the monsters escape from the dump to see the kids getting candy. All three monsters try to scare the kids, but the kids think they were human in costume. A real monster. Monsters had reached to house. Had went to a house. And, and they loved pennies. Who would have thought that monsters love eating pennies? Yeah. Yuck. I tried in penny when I was a baby, and I got oof, I had to go. To the, I had to go to the, or as they say, they have to put me up upside down. They hit me on my bottom just to get the penny out. Ugh. Never do it, kids. Trust me, never. But in the end, they ended up not realizing you do it. You have to go to different houses to do it, not go to the same house three times. And they got the couple annoyed really badly. Then when they went to the next house, they were introduced to the game of well, icky. The game is about. Passing the spooge around and pretending that they're gross and icky stuff. The first one was, uh, the second one was, well, the pink stuff kind of looked like gummy slime for some reason. Yeah. And that's for the eyeballs. I think they were grapes or jelly. But then, as Crumb tries to do the same thing, he passes up his eyes, and unfortunately, the eyeballs scared all of them out of the house. And this time, Nikki's group went charging up! Because it's midnight. Miss or mischief night. But they do that before Halloween. On this, they just do that. Throw an egg, clean paper, paper. And unfortunately, Icky's was lost in the whole of this. And so was Nick. So Nick and Icky's switched. And they thought that he was Ick. They thought that he was Nicky. 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 I mean, it makes sense. Icky and Nicky. In any case, and then the monsters were convinced that Nikki, that Nickus, <laughs> Nikki was Nickus. So they took him back to the monster, to the monster home. And as for Nickus, he enjoys being part of the Halloween party as he danced and enjoyed it. But even though Nikki, seriously, they picked on him a lot. They picked on Nickel. It gets even not knowing that it wasn't his brother. Seriously. When have the story have been told? Oh yeah, in the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Only it wasn't a good episode. In any case. As we see Nick as we see Nicholas. Yeah, I'm calling him Nicholas. Nicholas is taken back to Trio's dorm where they found out that Icus is Nicky in the costume. And Icus gets in Nicky's clothes to take himself as Nicky. But before then, the grumble caught them and Why are you in your room? You should be in your rooms. So in the end, they were all ran to the rooms, and Oblina and Crumb were going to try to get Nikki back up there, so that way he could get home. Sadly, I guess had to deal with all this jerky up there of his jerky brother. Before he could leave, though, the mother, who thought he was Nikki, told him to get dressed. And so far, the first thing he wore was a suit, a dress, a shirt, and a uh, shorts. Then he wore a good outfit. And then as he was eating the food, although they said, eat your breakfast, but not the whole box of cereal. And then the brother noted that he was acting like a weirdo. 
But then, as they were about to leave, and then she asked for, what about a kiss? I don't have cooties. And then he offered, you can have mine. And as he kissed her, but then it was a frog, and then she thought, oh, that was so sweet of him. Then as he got to school, well, let's get back to Ickes. I mean, Nikki. Nikki Oblina Crumb. And in any case, Crumbo was saying, I heard that my one of my three little monsters went out last night. Woody, you're not allowed out. You are not allowed to go up there. You are banned. And if I ever heard who did it, then you will be sorry. Or something like that. He tried to ask all the monsters. And yeah, at one point, Oblima and Crumb were laughing that they were able to make it. And it is, of course, but that was Nick. And then, well, and before the, but before, before we head on, in the first part, he actually scared his cat, so this will actually come in handy for him when he dresses up as the monster for this. So he was chosen to be in the, well, the view master, the view finder. And as they saw what well, he scared the cat, and Grumbo was very impressed, and was giving warm. But then, sla fast in the flash, Grum, fast in the flash, Crumb took the worm and, and said, um, it guess it hasn't been feeling well. And as everything back to normal, I mean, well, next in the normal world, Ickes was asked about his home. And he had, oh, my home's a garbage and a dump and a crap. It's really bad. It has trash and smelly stuff. And the teacher thought she was making, he was making fun of her. But he wasn't. So he was taken to detention. Where everyone started to bully him and annoy him. And how he got into gun trouble for shaking a chair, gun trouble for yelling. And then he bought the chair desk. No, I like this. <laughs> and bought the chair, making the kids afraid of him. So in the next part, we hear the monster singing terrible, terrible in tune. Ay, caramba. But then, Grumbo says, something is missing. Then, he uses a claw on his costume to <laughs> on the chalkboard, which is murder for my ears. That was malefulous. That's what the Grumbo said. Grumbo was very impressed with him and everything. But then, things got, things got different, and things got a little bit tricky during the day. Ike struggled, Ike struggled to go flush himself down a potty. Jack was trying to get him from under the bed, and unfortunately when they were getting candy, and they wanted to whoosh him out, they tried, they both got into a fight, and Trig went Ike's scare mode, and chasing Jack's friend away, which was like, a giant red, a giant red monster scaring them all, and they were all frightened out of their butt brains. <laughs> then Nikki gets home safely, and the monsters united back together. But then, Nikki was able to enjoy this. Hey, G hey, bro. Can you say, bunny rabbit? And he gave, mommy! <laughs> oh, I love that part. And then as they got, and as they, the monsters got back to their home, not through the toilet, though, because they were back. And took them home. And the monster trio thinking they have been punished by the gumbo. Well, well sorry, sorry. Read ahead the script. The grumbo found out from a little pink monster that those three went out on Halloween. And the trio thought that they were being punished by the grandma. But they are being treated like royalty. Through they disobeyed him. They have choose which punishment. It gets asked, what number three? You don't want to know. And the door open reveal a black screen with someone screaming. Well, here's my theory. I bet in a house has everything made of sugar and sweet because monsters can't handle the sweet sound of perfume or smells or candy or chocolate. And come on, it gotta be true. And there you have it, my double feature. What were my thoughts? It was the first episode and the pilot episode, although not the true pilot episode. And again, that was transformed a different episode. But this was the very first Halloween episode I ever watched from any cartoon on Nickelodeon. It was a classic. It was part of my childhood. So, in any case, that's all my thoughts for these two gruesome projects. So, I hope you have a lovely day, and see you next time, my little ghouls and ghoulbiettes. <laughs> okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>